Today I'm making the no need breast recipe from The Art of Eating In from Kathy Irway. And so far our no need bread looks like this. Okay, so let me just back up a second and here's how big the bowl is. And we'll take note of the size of the dough where it is now because it's supposed to double in size several times. The interesting feature about this particular dough, and it, it's spotty because it uses cracked black pepper. You can see like big pieces of cracked black pepper here, is that it uses water from boiling potatoes. Last night I boiled up some potatoes and made mashed potatoes for John, and I used these organic rust potatoes from my local stop and shop store. And what I did was I saved almost two cups of water for the bread as prescribed in the recipe. And this recipe calls for three tablespoons of this cracked black pepper. And it took me a while to get the, the cracked black pepper because um, Kathy recommends using a rolling pin. So I tried using a rolling pin with a Ziploc bag full of this crack of black peppercorns. And it took me forever, and I, I decided to bring out the mallet, and I <laughs> used the mallet, and uh, that wasn't very successful either, so I finally took out the old mortar and pestle, and that was successful. So here's the copy of the book that I'm using, and let's turn to the recipe. Here's the recipe, and um, I am omitting the Parmesan part that'll be topping the bread because um, I, I don't think John will like it. I'm sure I would like it, but I'm trying to get cheese out of my diet for the moment to lower my cholesterol. So we will tune in in a few hours, probably, um, well, she recommends two days, but I'm gonna let it rest about 12 hours, and it is 8.55 in the morning, so we'll see you um, nine o'clock tonight. Just before we part ways, I just, want to quickly tell you that according to the recipe the dough should be shaggy and wet well shaggy and sticky and it is exactly those two things here we are almost 24 hours later and it is the moment of truth i am peeling back the cover and i can see that the no need dough that i made uh, with the cracked black pepper has grown quite a bit. It's taken up, oh, I don't know, I would say maybe a fifth of the bowl now. But the one thing it is missing is the bubbling top. In the original recipe, she says that the dough will be ready when the top bubbles. And I, I don't see any bubbles at all. In fact, I see a little collection of liquid over here. What I'm going to do is wait another maybe three or four hours because I have to bake this. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and then um, I'll come back and show you the results. Here's something neat. What I found out was that my house might have been a little too cool to make the bubbles happen because not long after I set this aside, after that last film, I made some toast and I decided to stick this big bowl on top of the toaster oven and voila I got bubbles. So what I'm going to do is proceed with the recipe and bake the bread. Very exciting. Okay the next step in the recipe was for me to lightly flour a surface which I did with our wonderful counter and I gently folded the dough upon itself several times. It's actually kind of warm to the touch and gently cover it with plastic. I actually use the same plastic wrap that was covering the bowl. And now I've got to wait about 15 minutes. So the timer is set to 15 minutes and we can hear it ticking away. See you in 15 minutes. The next step of the recipe is to take off the plastic and gently shape this into a ball by folding it under itself and putting the seam side down on a clean cotton towel and what I'm going to do is coat this with some of the flour that I've used earlier and then I'm going to take another towel just like this and coat the the underside of it with flour so it doesn't stick to the dough ball 
and then uh, let that rise for two hours. The recipe says it should um, increase in size by twice the amount, so I'm going to measure it and uh, let you know what the measurement is. Okay, so I borrowed John's tape measure, and it looks like it's about six inches across and maybe five inches wide. So we'll come back and we'll see how much it's grown in two hours. Well, our bread did not get significantly larger. It is now nine inches wide and about, actually it's more like nine inches long and seven and a half inches wide, meaning this, this way. Um, the peppercorns are still standing out and I've decided to just go ahead and try baking it. I'm sure it's just because the house is a little chilly. It is winter and we're trying to, you know, be conserving about energy. So right now I am preheating the oven to 450. Let's see. And the instructions say to heat the oven with our um, Dutch oven inside. So that'll be heating up and then we'll place this dough down in the bottom of the pot and let it bake. Okay, so this is very exciting. Look at that loaf of bread. Isn't that amazing? Oh, so exciting. Well, I've got to take it out now and I, I need both hands to do it. So here is the bread. It even has that great crack along the top, although it's a little heavy, so I'm not sure how it's going to be when we cut into it, but by the time my friend Rosie shows up, we should be able to cut it. Let me just tip it up a little bit. Oops, well, it's sliding. We'll, we'll get to the underside later. Okay, the finished bread has come out of the oven, and we can see it has lovely air holes. Look at that hole, it's great. And we're going to taste it and let you know how it is. All right, I have just tried a piece of the bread. and It has a great texture, fresh out of the oven, and it is peppery. Wow! I'm thinking that it would be really good with um, some cream cheese or something like that. Anyway, we're going to have it with some good soup, and just wanted to let you know it is a success.